What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the I think I'm getting the flu hippie. I got chills, they multiply in, uh, but there's no Sandra D in sight, so yeah, I'm getting sick. Uh, we had a cold front come in last night, so it might be allergies, but my whole body hurts. Might be anxiety because here in the States it's election day and uh, uh, tensions are high. I live in a blue city in a red state and it's interesting times. That's all we're going to say about that. But I'm really, really excited to talk about Deja Vu, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young's. Crosby, Stills & Nash's second album, their first one with Young, um, came out on uh, my sister's birthday. She wasn't born yet, uh, back in 1970. Um, and elsewhere on this channel, I started doing the Neil Young discography. I'm going to go through every single studio album in order. Um, but I also decided that while I was doing that, um, they just happened to release the uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash um, and Young, uh, the Fillmore show from the year prior to this, the year prior to, not to this, the year prior to where the four-way street material came out. But it was a show that fell right in between after the Gold Rush and Harvest, which is where I am chronologically, or maybe it fell between, no, it fell between Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere and After the Gold Rush, is, which is where I am. I'm about to drop the Harvest video in a couple of days. Um, so I thought I would just kind of continue to do that and do Neil Young's side projects as they pop up in the discography. Eventually, I'll drop an entire Crosby, Stills, and Ash video. But for now, I thought this was kind of fun. Um, plus, I am going to drop a four-way street video. I have not listened to that album in longer than I haven't listened to Deja Vu. I remember being pretty hit and miss on it. Um, but I'm excited to go back. I'll, even though it should occur before Harvest, because that's when those shows were. Um, those are the shows that produce the Zappa line, um, uh, the Flo and Eddie. I got three hours of unreleased recordings of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young fighting backstage at the Fillmore East. Those were the shows where those sort of legendary backstage fights took place. Um, this is the album Deja Vu, uh, which sparked the, I want to say it was a Howie line. Maybe it was a Mark line. I almost cut my hair, which is a reference to a song on this album, David Crosby. I almost cut my hair. Um, yeah, so this came out in 70. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic folk rock, electric, slightly psych, very of the era, 70, late 60s, early 70s vibe. Um, I went to college in Bay Area in the late 80s. This album was ubiquitous among like the dead hippie scene. Like you went to Golden Gate Park, you were walk through Golden Gate Park on any weekend or any day. You're somebody's probably blasting this album. Um, it was at every party, every like jam session we went to. Somebody dropped this at some point in the night. This album seemed to be all over the place. Um, hadn't listened to it in probably who knows how long. It's probably been a good decade, but I decided to dig it back out. Um, I still think of it very much in terms of two sides, the vinyl format, and I think it's two perfectly, incredibly well-crafted sides of music, and I think it should be listened that way. As a CD, consider it as two halves, because I also think that works. Um, this is a great album. Um, 10 songs. You got Stills, wrote three of them. Nash, obviously, you know the Nash songs when you hear them, wrote two of them. Uh, Crosby wrote two. Uh, Neil Young wrote two, and then they cover a Joni Mitchell song. Um, and, it, and it's really, I would argue, maybe there's one arguably weak track, the last track, Everybody I Love You, which is kind of a generic folk rocker to close out the album. It's not a bad track, but I definitely, I don't think it's quite a fitting closer, um, just because everything else before it is just so epic. It's almost like, all right, we're just going to play out. Um, but I don't think it's a bad song. Um, I'm going to talk through the album, then I'm going to rank the songs very briefly at the end since I've been ranking uh, the Neil Young songs. Um, we It opens up with Carry On. Both sides open up with really good folk rock songs that take the acoustic instrument and make it kind of trippy and psyche and do really keep cool things with it. And they also have like cool changes that go along with it. The opening track, Carry On, it's kind of about a broken relationship, has this really cool sort of groove drop halfway through that goes into this early Santana meets early war type jam. Nice like do-do-do-do, organ comes in, some like pan percussion. Um, we don't really get an extended jam, but the feeling is loose. The feeling is jammy. The feeling is very of this era. And they nail it. 
it's perfect. It's an unexpected shift that doesn't need to happen because the song is already, I think, a pretty strong song. Um, Stills gets the lead vocals on this. He wrote the song. Uh, just a home run as far as starting off the album. Uh, side two, we're going to skip to side two because side two, which is track number six on the CD, uh, opens up with a song that's similar in many ways. It's very acoustic driven. It's very trippy. It's very psyche. Uh, it's a Crosby written song called Deja Vu, the title track. Lyrics are about, you know, if I'd only been here before, or like, you know, the positive, have I been here before? If I'd only been here before, you know, playing with the idea of deja vu, which I think in a psychedelic way is pretty trippy. The music, the folk elements are very psyche and trippy. Um, just both openers, side A and side B, track one and track six, just home runs, just immediately pull you into the album and immediately are like, this is a folk rock group who can like be a little trippy, is of the era, is aware of like the Grateful Dead and Jefferson Airplane and other bands, like fantastic stuff. The second track on each side are the, are the two Graham Nash songs, which means they're really pure, they're really melodic, they're really clean, they're really radio friendly. They're the songs that everybody loves who isn't really into music. Teach Your Children is the second track, um, kind of a leaning into a, a doop, do country vibe, almost like a dire wolf vibe, like an early Neil Young vibe. Um, musically, I, I like the music. I like that they're going that kind of country folk vibe. The lyrics are weird. Teach your children well, children's hell, all this kind of weird stuff. But Graham Nash has a purity about him and, a, and a, just a sweetness about him that, to me, isn't why I'm attracted to this album. But coming as the second song, excellent placement. Same with side two. Second song is Our House is a Very, Very, Very Fine House. Song he wrote for Joni Mitchell. Very more Beatlesque, a nice little piano, almost Eleanor Rigby-esque. Um, catchy, hooky. It's going to get stuck in your head whether you want it to or not. Again, not my favorite aspect of this album, but I think the placement on both sides is fantastic. Carry On, Teach Your Children, David Crosby's Almost Cut My Hair. We need more songs like this today. Fly My Freak Flag, an album rebelling against sort of conformity of society about looking in the rearview mirror and seeing those cop lights, the theme that's going to pop up with Neil Young in a couple years down the line on one of his best albums. Um, it's a song that I remember people making fun of in like Berkeley. Frank Zappa makes fun of, like, I almost cut my hair. But nah, man, these are good lyrics. Like... Like, Frank, they had long hair, and Frank pointed out the fact that it was a problem for society. Like, Crosby's doing the same thing. Uh, it's a very loose, jammy, almost like blues rock type, type number. Like, really, another one of those you could see Janis Joplin coming out and being like, I almost kind of just screaming as, like, the band just, like, jams on behind her. Like, it's absolutely fantastic stuff, man. Like, Janis Joplin flying her freak flag. She could tear this, tear down a building with the performance of this song. Really, really good song. Then we get Neil Young's Helpless. Just could have fit on After the Gold Rush, could fit on Harvest. Perfect Neil Young song. Just that, help, that there is a town. Just the, the vocals, the achy Neil Young vocals. Just, it's Neil Young. Another, like I've been talking about like the Neil Young templates that are laid down early in his career that as you move on, you can almost apply any album to these early templates. He's just expanding on sort of previously explored ideas. Helpless, just expanding on like the After the Gold Rush vibe and kind of other early stuff. Just phenomenal, phenomenal song. And then Side A closes out with a cover of Joni Mitchell's Woodstock. Arguably, yeah, the best song ever written about Woodstock, right? I mean, come on. The lyrics are aspirational. They're generational. Like many people have tried to have Woodstocks over the years. I've gone on many a road trip to many a festival going, this is our road Woodstock. No, it's, it's not. Like Woodstock, if I was of age, an age where I could sneak away and make it to New York from California in 69, I would have gone to Woodstock. Whether or not I would have made it, who knows? I would have enjoyed the highs. I definitely would have enjoyed the lows. I know my tendencies. I would have... Yeah, I probably would have been one of those people that that I should listen to the warnings about the certain types of things floating around and their and their particular colors, if you know what I'm talking about. But to me, Woodstock is a perfect song. Both Joni's original 
almost funeral like pump organ. Is that what she's playing on that? I don't know what it is. That version and this rock version, two perfect versions of a perfect song. Side two will then continue after Wood Talk. We get Deja Vu, we get Our House, we get a short little number by Stephen Stills, four plus 20, kind of a personal number about his life, um, kind of a darker number, um, a little more depressing. Um, interesting balance where like Crosby's like, I almost cut my hair as his third song choice on side A. And Stills is like, ah, oh, depressing stuff, people. Um, on this side, just kind of a low key, somber type number that, that's pretty powerful. And then we get what I think is kind of the weirdest song on this album. Not outwardly weird, but vibe weird. And that is Neil Young's Country Girl. Everybody's singing on this one. Um, it's got a, a darkness to it that a title Country Girl, I don't think would necessarily, like, you would infer from that that this is going to be kind of a darker. It's in like a, it's in three. and almost feels like a very reluctant waltz. Like, we know waltzes are kind of slow and depressing, but we don't want to be a waltz. But I have to acknowledge the fact that this that this is in three anyways. So it does have that just doom, doom, like feel to it. Um, it. It's like broken down into three sections. Whiskey Boot Hill, um, Down, 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 Country Girl, I Think You're Pretty. But I, it feels like one big long song. It's like five minutes long. Um, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of dark. I don't know. It, it fits on the album, but it almost seems like it almost seems like as perfect as the first side is, it almost seems like it should have gone on side A and then Woodstock should have been on side B just to balance the like upbeatness of the album. Um, but Country Girl closes out, is out side two. And then it closes out with Everybody I Love You um, as the closer. So yeah, man, a fantastic album. Like I, I re-listened to this, you know, this past week for the first time in who knows how long. Really enjoyed it. Was surprised at how just... If somebody were to drop this album now, I think people would hail it as just fantastic and Folk Psych is back and it's like, maybe it's dated in the almost cut my hair vibe, but we still have these like societal issues going on about conforming to a lot of different things and maybe not almost cut my, maybe almost cut my hair and like, as far as like transgender rights go or things like that. Like there is a blank slate of just protestness and left-leaning sort of politics that Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young kind of lean towards that infuses this album in just the best way possible because it's like populism, like far-left populism at, at its best, I think. Individual rights. Just, I don't know. I really, really like this album and I was surprised at how much I really, really liked it going back. Um, if I had to rank the songs, um, I would stock as a number one. I think it's a perfect song. It's just no matter what version it is. Um, then I'm going to go to Deja Vu just for the weirdness of it. Carry On for that awesome Santana drop. All three of those songs are fantastic. I've had phases in my life where those have probably switched, but I think those have always been the top three. Um, four would be Almost Cut My Hair. Crosby hits it out of the park with that. Um, five and six would be the two um, Neil Young songs, Helpless and Country Girl. Yeah. Um, I, I like Helpless a little more. I like I like that new, there is a town. Just that opening, uh, just absolutely beautiful. Um, then we have 4 Plus 20, the Stills uh, solo acoustic song. Um, then, not because I don't like them, but because they're, they're my just, if it was nothing but Graham Nash songs, I probably wouldn't listen to this album or have as positive a vibe about it as I do. Um, but I would put Teach Your Children first because of the country vibe. Our House second, because it is a little too Beatles-esque for me. Um, almost a little too children's television show, it seems like, for me. Um, though it is a catchy song. And then last would be Everybody, I Love You. But yeah, those are my thoughts on this album. Deja Vu. Dropped right between, right after, right in 70. So it dropped after... Um, I think it dropped before after the gold rush, right? So technically it would come before, it dropped before after the gold rush. So maybe I should have done it last week, but I had that other thing, but we're not going to be exactly right on when these things drop, but it dropped after, before, after the gold wash, then Neil dropped after the gold rush. Then I believe they dropped four away street, which I'll probably do next week. And then harvest came, which I'll drop at the end of this week. But yeah, I'm enjoying this run. 
Uh, let me know your thoughts on this album. If you haven't listened to this in a while, if you've never heard it, highly check it out. I think it holds up true. It's dated in a way that you're like, wow, music was really good back in 1970. I wish they could still make it like this. Um, I think that's the takeaway I really have from this. But yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things. I'm probably going to collapse after this because, again, I'm feeling really hot and warm right now. Like I have a fever. Hope you don't get it. I don't think it can go through the internets. So anyways, thanks for watching. Peace. Talk to you later.